Welcome to the Cumulus Linux video series on OpenStack. In this edition, we're going to talk about OpenStack Neutron and the ML2 plugin, or Modular Layer 2, and its relationship both to network devices and switches, as well as compute nodes. So within OpenStack, we're going to have both servers running VMs, as well as some network switches that connect those servers together. And it's the job of Neutron, the networking service within OpenStack, to provision network segments, whether through VLANs or VXLANs, to connect those tenants together. The way that this works is OpenStack Neutron will speak using ML2 to an application running either on the servers or on switches. This is called an ML2 agent. And that ML2 agent is the component that speaks OpenStack networking between that device, whether it's a server or a switch, and the OpenStack Neutron component. That ML2 protocol provides a, a common language between both OpenStack and whatever the end device is. So OpenStack Neutron doesn't actually need to know whether it's communicating with a switch or with a server. And what Neutron will do is use ML2 to speak to the agent and provision a network segment. So in this case, using ML2, we can provision network segments off of both of the servers. And that network segment could be a VXLAN tunnel. Again, provisioned entirely through OpenStack Neutron and ML2. It's also possible to provision VLANs from the top of rack switch to another top of rack switch. In this environment, where ML2 is provisioning a top of rack switch, there's no need for ML2 on the server. The server has a simple connection to the top of rack switch, whether or not it's OpenStack or not, and then OpenStack ML2 will provision the switch with the appropriate VLAN or VXLAN information. Within a VXLAN environment, this is actually extremely interesting because I can use the ASIC capabilities of a top of rack switch to provide VXLAN offload. This can increase the performance compared to a bare metal server of anywhere between five, even up to 30%, depending on packets and the device type of that server. With VXLAN, there are special NICs, sometimes called smart NICs, that have the ability to do VXLAN offload on the network adapter itself, but that's not always an option. One thing that is important to keep in mind when using ML2 on switches is that ML2 on switches, much like all state within OpenStack, is completely ephemeral. And what that means is that if there is a failure within the network component, and ML2 as a process crashes, or I reload my switch due to a software upgrade or a switch failure, I will lose all of the ML2 programming that exists from that switch. And there's no simple way to replay that ML2 programming back to that device after a failure. There are third-party plugins that can provide this capability, but they're not actually part of the core OpenStack Neutron deployment. When we're looking at deployments outside of ML2 on the top of rack switch, when ML2 is simply on a server, this is less of an issue. And the reason why is that if a server reloads, I would also lose those VM resources and they would be reprovisioned elsewhere, both for the virtual machine and the networking. So when we look at ML2 on top of rack switches, we can solve for both the VLAN and VXLAN problem but we do need to keep in mind the fragility that can exist within ML2 on switches. And it may be that our best solution for deployment is using VLANs on our top of rack switches or VXLAN from server to server. And we'll discuss those architecture options in a later video as we talk about VLANs, VXLANs, and eBPN and OpenStack deployments.